as Mrs. Baker so beautifully told us a moment ago. And there he was beaten and reviled. That wasn't his real suffering. His real suffering came when he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And that terrible, awful, mysterious moment, God had laid on him the sins of the world. Your sins and my sins, everything I've ever done wrong was put on Jesus. He took the judgment and the hell that I deserve on that cross. Jesus was offering this woman water for her thirsty soul. Our souls are empty and lonely and guilty. She felt the emptiness of her own soul and she said, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. She was very sincere, but sincerity alone is not enough. A few years ago in the Rose Bowl, a man picked up the football. Everybody shouted. They were all to their feet because the score was tied, and he ran for a touchdown, but he'd gone the wrong way, and he scored for the other side. He was very sincere. You never saw a more sincere man as you watched him, but he was wrong. You can be sincere in your religion, but you can be wrong. There is a way, the Bible says, that seems right, but the end thereof is the way of judgment and death. You may be on the wrong road. God is asking you tonight to turn around toward the cross by faith. Repent of your sins and receive Him as your Lord and Master and make sure of it. There are hundreds of you here tonight that have religion, but you're not sure about your relationship with Christ. And you'd like to make sure before you leave here. You'd like to know that if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven. But you're not sure of it. You don't have that peace and that joy that you believe is there somewhere for you and you haven't found it. Come and take of this living water, which is Christ tonight. Now the kingdom of God is not entered easily. Jesus said you have to go through a narrow gate and walk a narrow road and you may be misunderstood and even persecuted and you may suffer for your faith. So Jesus said to her, go call your husband. Now, he was hitting on a sore nerve. What a spot he touched in her life. He knew her sins. He knows yours. What an overwhelming flood of guilt and remorse this brought to her. She shrank back. It was as if a thousand searchlights had been turned on in her heart and every dirty secret in her life leaped into the glare. No person can come to Christ until there's conviction that you have sinned against God and you have repented. And repentance means to change your mind, change your direction, change your way of living. It means that you're willing to change. She partly covered it up and said, I have no husband. The scripture says, he that covered this sin shall not prosper. Jesus gently reminded her that technically she was right. She had no husband. She had had five husbands, and the man she was now living with was not her husband. And she said two things. Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. And please, sir, would you give me this living water? I want it. I need it. I need it in my life. At that moment, she acted on the light that she had, which wasn't much. You don't have to know much when you come to Christ. You don't have to know the whole gospel. You don't have to know the Bible. You just come like you are. The thief on the cross didn't know very much, but he turned to Jesus while he was dying and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Just remember me. He had no time to join a church. He had no time to be baptized. He had no time for anything. He just said, Lord, remember me, and that's all that was needed because Jesus said, today you will be with me 